Welcome to Your Capital What's Up. I'm Chuck Wieger, your area state senator. Thank you very much for watching. Today we're visiting with Commissioner Mark Phillips, uh, the commissioner from the Department of Employment, Economic Development, also known as DEED, but uh, I think of it as the Commissioner of Jobs because it's all about jobs. Welcome to That's our right. show, Commissioner. Yeah, thank you, Senator Weger. Uh, Happy to be here. And Commissioner, you're also a resident of Oakdale, yeah. and for those of you that uh, don't know, he's also the spouse of the superintendent of schools, Patty Phillips. So. Yes. Great. Well, you have a lot of duties uh, with the office. Uh, for people that don't know, mm -hmm. you are appointed by Governor Mark Dayton Correct. and then subject to an approval process mm -hmm. by the Minnesota Senate. Uh, and, and we're going to talk about the mission of deed, mm -hmm. of jobs. But first, we'd like to have you share a little bit about your background. And we'll start, Mark, by sure. telling us where were you, where were you born? I was uh, born and raised up on the Iron Range in Eveleth, and, um, and Patty and I uh, made our home in Virginia and raised our family in Virginia, Minnesota. On How about the growing range. up now, were your parents yeah. from the, the range as yes. well? Yes, yes. My grandfather came uh, in 1908 uh, okay. from uh, Cornwall. He's a Cornish uh, tin miner, underground tin miner, okay. who came to do mining on the Iron Range. Okay, so it so. was the prospect of going to the range from uh, which country? Well, he was from England. Okay. Um, a lot of Cornish tin miners were the um, engineering part of the mining operation. Okay. And then there was a lot of Southern Europeans that came to actually do the to do the mining, but uh, a lot of the supervision and engineering functions were actually uh, because of the, most of the mining was underground. Uh, these were experienced underground miners from Cornwall, England. Okay. Did he meet your mother? My grandmother? No, he grandmother? he sent sent for his uh, um, his bride. Yes. And uh, they got married, and um, uh, I actually grew up in the house uh, my mother was born in. Okay. And uh, so, uh, and then we didn't move about, you know, five miles away where Patty and I raised our family in Virginia. Okay. And we came to um, North St. Paul Maplewood Oakdale School District uh, in 2005. Okay. And so. in terms of the roots growing up, a couple mm -hmm. of memories you'd like to share uh, uh, leading up to high school? Well, um, what did you like to do? The growing most? up in Eveleth, it's the hockey capital of the world. So it is. Uh, uh, we have the U.S. Hockey Hall of Fame there, and so did you um, play hockey? I, I was a hockey player uh, up until high school, and um, didn't uh, play a little in, intramural hockey in, in college at UMD. Mm -hmm. But uh, what was your position? What did you like to play most? Um, well, I was a, a defenseman. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I'm a big guy, so they put me in the back. Okay, for uh, The last line of defense, I guess. Okay. Um, what else did you like to do growing up? Well, we, were, we had, uh, my dad, all, we always had a cabin growing up, so we were cabin people, and Patty and I are cabin people. We have a lake place up on Lake Vermilion, so that's, mm -hmm. uh, uh, we spent a lot of time there. And I did, How about the uh, outdoors and in terms yeah, of I've, fishing, well, hunting? My, yeah, in my, in my life I've done a lot of that. Uh, now it's more R&R uh, uh, &R, uh, from these high-stress jobs that we both have, so <laughs> we don't do a lot of those kinds of things anymore, but... Mm -hmm. It's a great, great place to get away and enjoy the beautiful uh, scenery and, and just enjoy the lake. So. Okay, and maybe best mm -hmm. memory in high school? Um, well, I, I would say that, you know, I had a you know, fairly uh, happy childhood, I would say. I don't know if they have, I have a best memory, but um, I always say the best thing is when I went to UMD and I met Patty. Um, okay, so, that's a very good uh, answer. And, uh, and so uh, after graduating high school, it, uh, Eveleth. Mm -hmm. Then you went to UMD. Yep. And what did you major in? I majored in business administration. Okay. And um, I actually went into my uh, family business. My dad was an auto dealer. Okay. Before the graduation, how did you mm -hmm. meet Patty? I met Patty at UMD. Okay. She lived in the apartment next door to the. I lived with six uh, six of us in one uh, unit, and they were uh, six girls in the neighboring unit, and most okay. of them were. Uh, in serious relationships, I, w I didn't know that one wasn't, and then uh, she, uh, she asked me to a sorority banquet, and uh, one thing led to another. And oh, so. bingo. Yeah. Okay. So you met Patty, yeah. and you worked on your education, mm -hmm. graduated uh, from UMD, mm -hmm. and had the degree. Yes. What did you do then? Well, um, you didn't marry in college, or did you? No, it okay. was after we graduated. Okay. And I, as I mentioned, I was in the family business for a few years. Okay. And then um, uh, Governor uh, Rudy Perpich asked me to get involved in economic development uh, 
up at the governor from the governor range himself. From the range, and, and uh, so I was the director of economic development in really most of the '80s. Um, uh, As a uh, you know, for the state. For the state yes. at Iron Range Resources and Re Rehabilitation Board. Yes. And uh, this was at the same time that Mark Dayton was the deed commissioner. Yes. So that's my interaction with Mark Dayton dates way back to maybe 1983. Okay. When he was we were both working for Governor Perpich at the time. So we okay. have a long, long-term relationship in, in the economic development world. Okay. And um, and then I. I I moved on from Iron Range Resources in the, uh, around 1989. I went to work for 10 years. I was the director of corporate development for Minnesota Power, okay. which is the investor-owned utility. It would be like XL or the old NSP here yes. and um, out of Duluth. And then uh, I was part of a small group that um, developed a, a community development venture capital fund called Northeast Ventures. Mm -hmm. And we raised... a. a a considerable amount of money, about $17 million over a period of years, and we invested in 35 startup companies up in north, northeastern Minnesota. And um, so it was quite a rewarding uh, time in my life as far as um, making initial investments and helping um, develop management teams and boards of directors for startup companies. Okay. And, um, and in uh, 2005, Patty decided to uh, uh, expand her career into a bigger school district. So of she, course, Patty uh, worked in education, uh, mm -hmm. starting out as a teacher. Uh, in Kindergarten range, teacher. And then, mm -hmm. uh, but as both of your careers developed, mm -hmm. uh, eventually it brought you to the Twin Cities. Exactly. Uh, a family that you, you have a daughter. Yes, a daughter who presently lives in California. Okay. And want to share her business. name with us? Her name is Jessica, and she's... Um, uh, newly married and expecting our first grandchild in uh, uh, next month. Well, congratulations. So we're very, very pleased about that. And she uh, lives in Los Angeles. And uh, she had a uh, quite a career here in the Twin Cities in the music business. What working. type of music? Um, primarily Latin music, actually. But um, okay. in, in, the, um, in the marketing side of the music business, she worked for uh, Best Buy and Target. And now she works for... EMI, which is the, they own Capital Records and uh, Virgin Records. And okay. uh, so she's been quite successful in the music business. Quite um, a move from, you know, the range, Twin Cities, Twin and Cities then out to Los Angeles. Hollywood. Yes, yeah, exactly. And, and then she I was, was a Board of Regents. She was a Regent at the University of Minnesota. And, you know, my, my mother went as a graduate of the University of Minnesota, both Patty and I. My son attended the Twin Cities campus, and Jessica graduated from Morris. So yep. we're pretty big boosters of... Uh, University of Minnesota, and I'm quite a Gopher fan, uh, yes. so okay. I follow all Gopher sports. Okay, and as so. we're going to focus in, mm -hmm. uh, it's helpful with mm -hmm. your, knowing your background and that, mm -hmm. but I also would like you to share maybe some of the civic activities you've been involved in, and I know particularly in uh, scouting you've been involved. But, I've been involved uh, here in scouting, yes. Yeah. Um, I've had a lot of civic involvement over the years. Uh, I've been on uh, boards of uh, local community foundation, helped start a uh, community Foundation up in Virginia. I was on the Board of Directors of the Northland Foundation, which is one of the McKnight, um, uh, McKnight Foundation started six initiative funds around the state, and yes. I was involved in the one in northeastern Minnesota. Um, I was the development director. We raised $38 million to build the aquarium in Duluth. Uh, yes. I, so I've been involved a lot civically. Um, and here, when I moved to uh, the Twin Cities and... and um, 2005. 2005. Okay. And that, what triggered that was mm -hmm. uh, Patty's, Patty's accepting Patty's, the superintendency mm -hmm, of St. Paul Maypoot Oakdale. And uh, I, I was seeking a kind of a new career, and I got involved in the business development side of the construction industry by working for Cross Anderson Construction. Mm -hmm. And um, the... Uh, but um, uh, one of my connections from the university... Uh, uh, Board of Regents, and Cieslak uh, was the um, executive director of the Board of Regents, okay. like the staff person. Yes. And her husband, John, is uh, involved in the scouting the, in this area. Okay. And uh, because I knew John for a number of years, he said, would you uh, help me out and volunteer in the fundraising side of scouting here in the Metro? And I said, I don't know anybody. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, no, you will. Yes. So uh, I put a, my scouting hat on and went off and mm -hmm. uh, did the community uh, fundraising 
activity for a number of years. Okay. So well, we appreciate yeah. that and yeah. I know how much you Scoting's do. Scoting's a great organization. So. Yes. But the focus overall has been uh, jobs, economic development Correct. throughout your whole career, mm -hmm. uh, public service uh, in many aspects mm -hmm. uh, during that journey. And now you are in charge of the uh, office for deed, mm -hmm. uh, or as I would say, for the jobs uh, mm -hmm. office of our state. Uh, yep. I see a few main functions, but mm -hmm. you know, first is for helping people find jobs, retraining, and yes. tell us about that component, and then we'll go to some of the others. Sure. And, um, many people know about the work right. training centers, but tell us about the mission for helping uh, people uh, get jobs to mm -hmm. retrain, and what right. uh, for people that are watching too, if they want to learn more, what they can do. Mm -hmm. When Governor Dayton was the deed commissioner, it was Department of Energy and Economic Development. Yes. And uh, under the Ventura administration, the department was merged with the Department of Economic Security, which is the function of um, uh, workforce development, I call it. But yes. it's uh, all aspects, all the way from paying unemployment insurance to, as you mentioned, workforce training programs yep. um, and things like that. So um, actually, in the, and when it, it comes to a number of employees, it's the biggest part of uh, DEED is mm -hmm. the um, workforce development side. And uh, it's mostly federally funded, although Minnesota stands out as a, state, a, a great state because they do invest in workforce development as well. We have the Minnesota Job Skills Partnership uh, uh, Act that was passed, I think, in the 80s, mm -hmm. and where there's quite an investment where we partner with the Minnesota State College and University System, DEED, and the Department of Education, Adult Basic Education, and we do a lot of um, uh, work with the incumbent workforce um, and working with companies directly on providing customized job training that mm -hmm. the companies actually need to grow and expand. Yeah. So it's a wonderful program and I'm very proud that Minnesota invests in, in workforce because yeah. it, you know, investing in talent is the best investment we can make because it's, it's something that can't disappear or, or can't be taken away from us. Right. So. Um, Tell us about That's the workforce good. centers. I often will refer people there. Yes. Uh, and been to some of the tours. Mm -hmm. We have one right over in uh, North St. Paul yes. by Target. Yep. Uh, there's one in uh, Washington County, one or perhaps more than that, right. uh, with the centers. But mm -hmm. uh, give us a pitch we on have, that. We have uh, 51 workforce centers throughout the state. Uh, um, there's quite a concentration because of the population concentration here in the metro area. But they are a very uh, multi-function place uh, where you can come to get a lot of information. Um, and it's uh, available for anyone that's watching. Anyone, if, anybody for watching, a job, want to learn more about your skills and exactly get skills. And um, they used to in the old days they were called unemployment offices, but you know nowadays um, the unemployment insurance uh, part of our business is highly automated, mm -hmm. and usually most people can access those kinds of uh, benefits online yes um, and very often uh, they can do that at home if they don't have the technology at home they can do it at a library or at a workforce center we do have some technology available mm -hmm. there but it's also a great place because we partner with the local workforce investment boards and other nonprofits that provide job training and and um, okay. help with uh, job seekers um, help with work readiness things like that so um, Every workforce center is a little different and has different partners, but it's, they're all a combination of the state and a lot of local and regional partners as well. And these local groups, they meet with employers and you're trying to identify workforce needs and mm -hmm. then match them with people that uh, exactly. will hopefully have the skills or can develop those skills so they right. can uh, re-enter the job force. In fact, that's one of the um, things that we're recognizing right now. Um, we're in a point where we're about um, somewhere in the mid six range in unemployment, uh, six percent, mm -hmm. six and a half, six point nine last month announced. Even though that's probably a little bit skewed by the mm -hmm. um, the state shutdown in June, yes. but um, when you look at that, if you look at our labor force being about three million people, we have somewhere around two hundred thousand people uh, unemployed in Minnesota. Yes. Yet when the governor and I went on a um, uh, a series of uh, round job roundtables around the state, 
we heard from a lot of businesses that they couldn't find employees with the right job skills. That's right. And uh, how many tens of thousands of jobs are open, but Correct. we just don't have the skilled Correct. workforce? It's pretty considerable. Yes. And um, I'm not saying that we still don't have an unemployment problem because we have a unique aspect to this unemployment problem that we mm -hmm. haven't had in the past. Yeah. So, but having said that, you're right. Uh, the misalignment of the skills of the workforce with the jobs that are available to, that are mm -hmm. available today yes. sometimes require higher um, technology skills or math science skills or something like that. It's just a different skill set than the people had in their previous employment. So then it's very important for the public schools, well all the schools, Correct. but uh, when we have a goal for mm -hmm. college career ready yep. or you know, technical uh, workforce, you know, that the student be ready, but mm -hmm. those skills align with the with the, what the employers are telling you. And so I imagine there's dialogue with uh, the, the K-12 community as well as post-secondary to see what can be done. Exactly. So tell us more about what's being done to meet these needs that aren't, aren't being filled right now. Exactly. And th the other phenomenon we have is um, we have relatively high unemployment right now, although Minnesota is tracking way better than the rest of the country. The rest of the country is around 9%, so we're mm -hmm. in you know, six, mid-sixes. Um, but what we're finding is the pipeline of students coming out of um, high school is getting smaller. Yes. Um, the phenomena of declining enrollment that used to be kind of a rural problem is now everywhere. Yes. So it's just a demographic shift. Um, and. Um, and that's, more people are retiring. Yes, and then we have, and that was delayed a little bit. We really thought that would already be upon us, but we're yeah. just starting it. Because of the recession, a lot of people elected to delay their retirement, but that won't be permanent. So we're going to have this phenomena where, where if we want to fill all the jobs that would keep companies here in Minnesota, we're going to have to train and retrain uh, our, our incumbent workforce. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've de we're developing programs. We uh, have something called Fast Track, which is um, uh, where we take someone who's unemployed and, and find them a job, but also work with them on a little longer term basis, getting some um, accredited education that mm -hmm. would lead to some kind of credential. Yes. So it might be a certificate, it might be a, a two-year degree, it might be a four-year degree. The, the idea is to put them on a career pathway yep. rather than just finding them a job and walking away. Mm -hmm. So it's getting people on a career pathway because that usually leads to the kind of uh, employment that you can uh, support a family on. And this is based on the research, what the employers right. are telling you. Yes. So it's Absolutely. definitely going to yeah, be a benefit if mm -hmm. there's participation and yep. they complete it. The research tells us that by 2018, which isn't very far away, um, about 70% of the jobs will require some kind of post-secondary credential. Okay. And um, we, our workforce isn't aligned with that right now. We need okay. to do a lot to make that alignment happen. And, and uh, uh, Minnesota's not unique. Is this a, no. a national, national concern? National issue. Okay. Um, but, you know, states are responding in different ways and people are trying. We've, we're, we've worked and I think we are nationally respected for our work in this Career Pathways area with this mm -hmm. Fast Track initiative. We received uh, philanthropic support. We've received federal support. But now I think the state's probably going to have to step, step up and start making some serious investments because our, our workforce issues are a little different now. I'll tell you a phenomenon that hasn't happened in, in anybody's memory is, remember I told you there's maybe 200,000 people out of work? Yes. About 50,000 of those are probably, in that range, are construction workers. Mm -hmm. um, probably heavily weighted in residential construction because of the housing bubble and, and what everybody knows what went on. Um, there's been a huge downturn in new housing starts and, and remodels and things like that. So um, the, the construction workforce is about 150,000 so if you recall, my three, 3 million is our workforce number? Yes. That's about 5%. So they represent about 5% of our workforce, but okay. they represent about 30% of our unemployment problem. Mm -hmm. So that's very unusual to have one sector dominate our unemployment problem in that way. How long so, do you expect that, 5 to 10 years? Do you foresee there's a lot of pent-up demand then that will well, we eventually re-employ? 
or well there's there's always signals that maybe housing will improve and then there's always there's uh, counterbalancing signals that there's still uh, I think I read something there's 26.4 percent of the mortgages in the country are still underwater yes so I don't know that we've seen the last of our housing problems but okay. clearly <clears throat> um, uh, in the short run what the other uh, thing research tells us is that construction workers hang on to their career aspirations a lot longer than others before they retrain mm -hmm. so they would rather hang in there and wait till the construction uh, climate gets better okay. and um, th th that's not doesn't make me happy in the sense that we'd like to be um, retraining people and getting them back into the workplace. But Commissioner, could you just summarize again the areas where there's the most need where we don't have enough skilled workers? Well, you know, that's the most difficult, that's the challenge we have really. Where are the jobs of the future? Because we, I mean, uh, some of these things that we uh, don't even maybe know yet precisely. So um, what we try to do is find where we can train people with transferable skills to a, that would apply to a number of industries. Mm -hmm. And what we do know, a lot of them uh, involve now, involve technology more, involve math science more. Okay. So I think uh, if I were gonna advise somebody uh, that has children uh, looking at educational opportunities, I would encourage them, no matter what they plan to go in, to take plenty of math science. Okay. And that's um, what's being emphasized right in the schools. Exactly. That's why there's various reporting that's yep. being done and, and yep. tests, so it, it all ends up in terms of the hope, the vision that there'll be a job and yep. uh, that should pay off. Um, exactly. I know you also, you work closely with uh, businesses in yep. terms of uh, we want to retain jobs, mm -hmm. we want to create jobs, and so mm -hmm. a lot of outreach and you're involved not only here in the state but uh, internationally. Yes. The um, thing about Minnesota is that we are um, a, a good place to do business. I know that uh, there's always debates going on about our tax structure, this and that. But we're the home, on a per capita basis, we have more Fortune 500 companies headquartered here than any other state in the union, including New York. Yeah, that's a, a very a per, important thing a per for people capita to remember. Basis. Yes. yes, per capita wise. Yes. yes. So for a state our size, we're doing extremely well in that regard. Um, but we have our challenges, and, um, and we are naturally competitive, though. Mm -hmm. um, because of our good workforce, the University of Minnesota, um, the quality of life here, mm -hmm. um, in a lot of comparisons, Minnesota is good. So if it was a very level playing field, we would, I think, attract a lot of business. Yes. Um, so because the playing field isn't flat, though, that a lot of states provide incentives and, um, for companies to locate and um, some of them are quite substantial. So we have to uh, be in that game, even yes. though we might not wish to be. Mm -hmm. so, um, so we have some programs, Minnesota Investment Fund uh, is one that we use a lot. Mm -hmm. And so we try to provide incentives when we think there's a good return on investment for the state okay. in, the, in terms of jobs and, and tax base and things like that. So, and we've had some play lately um, on a number of, uh, potential uh, business expansions and relocations. So I'm feeling um, pretty good. We do need to um, get more resources in this area. And so one of the things when you said, what are, what are some of the business plans? And I've been working that with the governor on this is um, to, f to try to find a uh, more permanent source of capital for our, our economic development um, incentive plans. Okay. And uh, you've heard about the Itasca Group and their, yes. and their new uh, regional economic development effort called the Greater MSP. Mm -hmm. um, they, they are the marketing arm yes. for the metro area, and, uh, but they still need resources from DEED in order to be competitive in what they do. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're um, looking forward to um, uh, coming to the legislature and um, and uh, working with uh, everyone, everyone at the legislature to come up with some solutions for this problem. Yes. Well, there's a strong so, commitment uh, right. for jobs, and yes. I know you're working with the Chamber of Commerce, yep. Business Partnership, and others, so yep. uh, I'm sure we'll continue on that path. And right. As you mentioned earlier, um, you know, the unemployment rate is not as high here as it is in other states. No. Uh, we don't rest on that laurel, no. and we'll stay focused on right. whatever we can to uh, meet this, the needs that the workforce mm -hmm. is saying and yep. work with the uh, various groups that you're doing. Right. So, now, one, of, one of the reasons that um, 
we feel Minnesota has fared better than other states is that we do a lot of exporting from Minnesota. Yes. So I'm playing on that. Um, I've we've been encouraging the Minnesota Trade Office to uh, continue to train companies on how to export. So I always say if you have a, a company that's offering either a good or a service, even if they uh, if they're limiting their markets to the U.S. only, they should uh, be enlightened and uh, trained on how they could sell in other countries because our largest trading partner, partner is Canada and there's not a lot of barriers with uh, currency or um, uh, language and, and uh, things like that or transportation. So that's a good place to start your exporting. Yeah. And, uh, Commissioner, I'm mm -hmm. sorry we're almost out of time, okay. but uh, you have a, a great website as well and yes. I encourage the viewers to con contact that site, uh, navigate it, uh, for, go visit a workforce center. Mm -hmm. uh, it's free. The yes. services. So, if a person watching, uh, they want to maybe upgrade the, their skills or look for a job, they might know uh, mm -hmm. someone that's looking. You might have, you might be working, but you want to just look at some other options. That's Absolutely. all available. Absolutely. Yeah, check it. Just attend, to, go to a workforce center in your area, and they're not hard okay. to find. And uh, they can go to the website. They can mm -hmm. call your office or an assistant. You want to yes. share that number? Sure. Um, the uh, Positively Minnesota is our, our website, PositivelyMinnesota.com, yes. and then uh, uh, the number, uh, my number, is 651-259-7119, and that's my office directly, and I'd be happy to, uh, you know, when we've been on the road with the governor at these job roundtables around the state, yes. he gives his personal f home phone number out. Yes, he does. And, he, and um, he answers it. And he answers the phone because he said he lives with three German shepherds and they don't answer the phone, so... <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, Commissioner Mark Phillips, thank you so much for oh. joining us. Thank you for thank your you. career for in uh, public service, working on jobs, and making our state a great place to live. If you, viewers have questions, contact the commissioner, visit the website, and I know you'll be satisfied. If you have questions, give me a call. My cell phone is 651-770-0283. For your capital, what's up? I'm Chuck Wieger. Thank you very much for watching. Great. Um.